Buenas tardes, familia. Marangeli Mejia here. Marangeli Mejia Ravel. It's an honor to be part of the team of the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. And part of the beauty of this work is having the opportunity to share space with creatives like the, the fabulous group that we have today. And uh, we're going to start with a round of introductions, and then we have three questions. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Melissa Montero, a filmmaker born and raised in New York. Um, background is Puerto Rican and Ecuadorian. Um, I participated, this was my first time participating in the festival, and I participated with Memorias de Mi Familia, documentary about uh, my family's journey uh, between Puerto Rico and the United States. Um, it includes a great deal of archival footage and images, and the backdrop of the film is um, you know, Puerto Rico's political uh, position today. Uh, my name is David Romberg. I'm the director of um, The Man of the Monkey. Uh, my, my background is um, kind of all over the place. So I, I grew up in, uh, in Brazil. I uh, also lived in uh, Israel and my family's uh, from Argentina. Um, and so my my film is is a little bit about uh, is is kind of related to my family background in the sense that um, the my film traces my family's history to a remote island uh, in Brazil where I where I spent my childhood and the story follows a kind of a bedtime story that my father told me about uh, a mysterious man who was living uh, with a monkey in the rainforest. Uh, close to our home, and uh, and that's it. Well, it's a pleasure for me to be part of Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. Eh, voy a hablar en español. <laughs> bueno, soy Valentina Baraco Pena de Uruguay. Eh, soy productora y directora. El año pasado también participamos del festival con una película que me que me tomó como productora que se llamó Ocho Cuentos sobre mi Puacucia y ahora estamos participando de esta edición con ese soplo, que es mi primera película como, como directora. Es un largometraje documental que parte de la propuesta de mi abuelo Fernando, eh, un veterano de unos 90 años, que me propone hacer una película en conjunto el día en el que yo le digo que me voy a mudar de su casa, de la casa en la que vivimos, en la, en la que convivimos por más de 20 años. Eh, ante mi sorpresa empezamos a, a filmar y la película es el proceso de un abuelo y una nieta haciendo una película en conjunto donde hay un abuelo que aprende a usar una cámara y a filmar para estar cerca de su nieta y una nieta que redescubre a un abuelo que conoce a un abuelo a pesar de haber convivido eh, lo que lo conoce a través de la cámara y bueno que, que se suma a todas estas aventuras este, del observar la realidad y de afrontar los, los desafíos que la vida nos presenta. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Mi nombre es Mikey Coldero, um, co-director de uh, Lo que viene, uh, For Those to Come, along with uh, Frances Medina. Este, our film is about environmental justice leaders uh, in Puerto Rico, um, and they happen to be all women. <laughs> So that's one of the themes of our film. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> eh, yo soy Leonardo Cauterucho, soy el director de Entre Cerros. Y Entre Cerros es un largometraje documental que explora la vocación y el desarraigo a través de dos historias de personas oriundas de la comunidad indígena de Aguita Calchaquí, de la provincia de Tucumán, en Argentina. Uh -huh. Y, y bueno, son dos historias, una es la historia de, de Rubén, que él es un chico que está terminando su educación para, para ser profesor de educación primaria, uh -huh. y está próximo a recibirse, pero bueno, <coughs> tiene la intención de quedarse a trabajar en la comunidad, pero tiene que afrontarse a, a las reglas del sistema educativo. Y por otro lado, la historia de Mirta, que ella es una trabajadora rural que quiere ser monja, pero para eso tiene que alejarse de su familia y ella cumple un rol muy fundamental en su familia porque es la encargada de realizar las tareas más pesadas uh -huh. y además 
es la encargada de la salud de su madre. Entonces también es complicado, digamos, llevar su vocación y su deseo por, por diferentes cuestiones que se ven en la película y que tienen que ver con esto, con, con la vocación de esa parte. Thank you so much. This phenomenal just to even think about the diversity of the, the group that it's here. Yo voy a leerle las, las preguntas. Voy a, a agradecerle que sigamos el mismo orden que, que seguimos en la primera pregunta. So sorry, Melissa, that I picked on you. Pero la primera pregunta es, ¿qué les inspiró a hacer esta película y cuál ha sido la parte más desafiante dentro de su proceso de filmmaking? What inspired you to make the film and what has what was the most challenging part of your filmmaking process? What inspired me to make the film are a few things. Um, I'll say the first thing that comes to mind is my family. Um, You know, I thought it was really interesting to have a childhood where we were always in Puerto Rico every single summer and we got to spend a substantial amount of time with my grandparents and with my cousins and then all of a sudden have to come back to New York and like forget about not forget, but like jump back into the New York City jungle. Um, and so that was the first part. I also always thought my grandparents were really amazing characters um and i thought they were really funny so first it's my family um the next one is you know having discovered um these super eight films that my father had and wanting to know what was on them and just seeing the collection of photographs that you know my parents had and that my grandparents had Um, they weren't always taken care of properly in boxes and things like that. Um, but, you know, I've always loved hearing about the past and my family. And I just thought it was really interesting um, as a young person learning that my grandparents lived in New York for the amount of time that they did because they never spoke English. And so I always remember them just as you know, abuelita and abuelito in San Germán, and that's it. Um, but they had this whole other life in New York. Um, the most challenging part was, oh, and the one last part about the inspirational part was also um, seeing the work of Thomas Allen Harris, um, Black filmmaker and photographer um, in New York. I took a class with him and You know, he does a lot with the family archive and photography, and it just really inspired me. He inspired me, you know, he encouraged me to do something larger with the small project I created in his class. And then that's when I moved on to the film. Um, the challenging part for me was editing my film. So I don't consider myself an editor. It was really, really hard. I didn't even think I can do it. Um, so this film was my thesis film for my MFA that I graduated from. And so I had an amazing advisor. Her name was Kelly Anderson, but you know, she was more than that. I feel like she was a production consultant. And for two years, um, we were on Zooms every single week, watching my cuts together. And, you know, she kept saying, you can edit this. And I'm like, no, I gotta find an editor. I gotta come up with money to pay somebody. And she's like, no, you're gonna do this. And so she really pushed me. And I just didn't think, you know, back then looking at it, I didn't even think I could do a, a 50 minute film, edit myself, you know, add the music, even though I got it mixed, um, you know, I kind of did all the placement for the music. Um, I did some shooting myself, even though the majority was shot by, by other people. I did some shooting as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All about embracing new chapters and getting out of our comfort zones. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, in addition, because um, David had mentioned, you know, the theme of home and his film. And so for me, you know, that is a theme in my film, which is me searching for home mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know, um, because I'm stuck between these two places, Puerto Rico and New York. And the challenging part was going back to that space. Uh -huh. and, and, and since I'm a main character in the film, uh, allowing myself to reflect and to go in. Um, and mm -hmm. so that was really challenging because I had to dig deep. Um, and so the other, the compañero Leonardo mentioned about um, his montaje and working on it alone during COVID. And I feel like that was exactly the same thing that I was going through also, which was having to edit a film by myself. You know, COVID is happening. We're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I'm like stuck with all of these feelings. I'm crying every time I look at footage and having to go back to the past and looking at, you know, my grandparents over and over again um, and just being deep in thought and all of that. So thank you for questions? adding that. All right. No, okay. um, so I think what inspired me really was, you know, it was like a single moment that, that kind of started the journey that I, that I went on in the film. And it was when I found myself um, living alone in the United States without any of my family and, and kind of feeling like I didn't really understand what, uh, what home was as a concept uh, because, you know, I have family in multiple countries. I speak multiple languages. I, I identify with multiple cultures and, um, and so I started reflecting and thinking back to my childhood and specifically stories. Like I always found um, bedtime stories and kind of fairy tales and things that your parents tell you to scare you or to inspire you, like really interesting. I was very interested, in, you know, I became very interested in magical realism and thinking about the symbolic nature of, of these stories that our parents tell us. And, and I kind of became fixated on one particular story that my father told me about the man of the monkey, this guy, this mysterious hermit who was living um, in isolation in the rainforest. And I really tried to understand why my father told me that story. And it was told to me as a kind of like scary story, like don't go into the forest because you know the man of the monkey will will get you, whatever, you know. And so that was the, the impetus to, to travel back to Brazil. To, to this island and to discover, you know, who the man of the monkey was, like the, the truth behind this story, like behind this myth, and also to understand what my family was doing there, like to understand the, the real story behind my family's um, presence on this island, which was closed off to the world um, in, until the early 2000s. And then, you know, through that, we learn about um, the various things that happened to my family during uh, the dictatorship in Argentina uh, and even before. And so it, be it became this kind of um, journey going backwards, even though I was moving forward in time, looking for this mysterious character on the island. Um, so, I, yeah, so that was the inspiration. And it kind of became... Um, something that was uh, upset, I was very obsessive about it. And so that, that was also, I think, the most difficult part of the process is that it took um, over 10 years to make the film. And I was, I, was a, I was a much younger person when I started the film. I was in my, in my 20s, I'm now 40. And so, you know, as I was working on the film, I began to change and everything was changing constantly. And so I think the most difficult thing was well when is the film finished like it can continue actually indefinitely there is this idea that you can make a film and never really finish it because you become usually better or you be, you start to become interested in, in parts of the story that that are new and um and so kind of like you know deciding when the story was over i think was the most um the most challenging part Thank you so much. Ahead, bueno, es mi turno. <risa> bueno, eh, yo creo que en, en ese soplo la inspiración está asociada a, a otros sentimientos. En primer lugar, creo que está asociada a, al querer 
eh, descubrir por qué mi abuelo me, me propone hacer una película en conjunto. Mi abuelo nunca fue cinéfilo, nunca le interesó el cine. Y en ese sentido tenía una idea muy clara de que quería hacer una película y que tenía el nombre, quería que se llamara Ese Soplo. Que Ese Soplo viene de una canción del músico y cantante Carlos Gardel, que en una parte la canción dice sentir que es un soplo la vida. Y eso fue una frase que a mí me quedó resonando desde, desde pequeña, y en ese sentido, eh, el descubrir, el, el querer descubrir por qué mi abuelo quería hacer una película y qué era lo que, lo que quería filmar, fue lo que, lo que primero me, me inspiró y me, me hizo lanzarme a, a, al vacío y al, y al aceptar esta propuesta. Por otro lado, también... Este, en el momento en el que yo me voy de, de su casa, también es que descubro y, y siento que no conocía a mi abuelo. Entonces, en ese sentido, eh, que los recuerdos que yo, que yo tenía eran de cuando yo era chica, y en, entonces este, eran como esos recuerdos de, de, de la infancia, y no tenía recuerdos de mi abuelo de grande, y de compartir tiempo con mi abuelo de grande. Entonces bueno, dije, hay una, eh, esta inspiración también está asociada al querer compartir tiempo juntos y, y a ver eh, qué es lo que, lo que nos depara el compartir tiempo y el, y el vivir tiempo juntos. Y por otro lado también eh, la inspiración llegó por, por una documentalista, Naomi Kawase, que bueno, yo este, ya venía conociendo sus películas y en 2016 eh, dicté, tuve un taller con, con ella en la Escuela de San Antonio de los Baños de Cuba, con este proyecto, y ahí también este, estaba en, el, en la mitad del proceso de filmar, eh, un proceso de 10 años, y, y también uno de los desafíos este, más grandes era el mantenerme filmando y no tirar la toalla, eh, y en ese taller también este, encontré la inspiración y la fuerza como, como para seguir adelante. Creo que uno de los, de los mayores desafíos de, de hacer estas películas, y esta película en puntual, es el estar tanto tiempo filmando, porque entendí que, que la película eh, me requería de que el tiempo pasara y de que el vínculo se fuese transformando, eh, que yo me volviera adulta y que mi abuelo también se, se volviese mayor. Y ahí este, también fue eh, uno de los mayores desafíos ent entender que, no, que yo no estaba haciendo una película observacional sobre una persona mayor, sino sobre un vínculo, y que en ese vínculo yo también era personaje y tenía que construirme y, y mostrarme como un personaje. Y ahí fue fundamental el trabajo en la edición y con todo el equipo, con Magdalena Esquinca, con Andrés Costa, con los productores. Eh, fundamental porque bueno, el cine, por suerte, es un es un trabajo en equipo y se nutre de, de varias personas y ahí es que, que radican que la película exista el día de hoy. Gracias. A ti, gracias a ti. Síguelo. Este, uh, you know, to be honest, that the, you know, it's not, <laughs> I'm inspired for life to story tell about Puerto Rico. Este, this project specifically for those to come for lo que viene came about through a, um, a collaboration with Open Society Foundations. Um, and uh, I think they were looking to highlight um, a lot of the work that was being done by the people in Puerto Rico in the base in the climate sector, um, climate justice sector and environmental justice sector. Um, so uh, being part of the collective Defend Puerto Rico Um, where we are, you know, constantly storytelling, short form, long form storytelling, documentary work on uh, issues affecting Puerto Rico. Um, we were tapped to kind of tell, help tell this story. Um, and I think with any documentary, you don't know what you're going to get until you start, you know, capturing things and um, digging deep into the story. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of like the first audience member to, to <laughs> to watch this story as a documentarian because you're the first person to see it. Um, and you know, you don't know what you're going to get till you get to like the editing room um, and your story like really develops, you know? Um, but for us, you know, our story kept, kept hitting 
women leading environmental projects in Puerto Rico, right? Like uh, they, you know, women were forming the base of the work that was being done in Puerto Rico um, to combat uh, and to, you know, around environmental justice and climate justice. Um, and, and these were narratives that were not being told. Um, I think there's like a, a general narrative about Puerto Rico um, and everything that's happening in Puerto Rico now, historically, um, that the people of Puerto Rico um, cannot manage themselves or they can't govern themselves or um, the skill or the talent doesn't exist in Puerto Rico. And that's why you know we're so dependable on like outsiders um, to come in. And all the storytelling that the Friend Puerto Rico does um, and, and that we're committed to is counter <laughs> to that narrative, right? That the solutions that are needed um, for a new Puerto Rico and a Puerto Rico that flourishes exists here in Puerto Rico. Those people are here doing the work. That work is happening regardless of like any support from the government, regardless of any support from funders, that work is happening in Puerto Rico. Um, and women are leading it. So, um, you know, our story took on that narrative and, 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 and we were able to highlight three women um, in different sectors of that work um, from, you know, community activists um, uh, to uh, farmers, um, to even just, you know, uh, an elder woman that's just trying to, uh, you know, avoid the water from coming up in Loisa and, and making her house fall into the ocean, you know? Um, we, these kind of, these three women kind of, we felt like represented the trajectory of the work that's happening in Puerto Rico, you know? Um, and even though, you know, the story, but, you know, the documentary is a climate justice story, environmental justice story, you know, it, even that is political here in Puerto Rico. And we can't talk about any issue in Puerto Rico without talking about the colonialism that exists in Puerto Rico. Um, so, you know, a lot of that work is about, uh, you know, combating displacement in Puerto Rico. Um, and also, uh, you know, when the displacement, you know, people leave, right? And that's kind of how like Puerto Rico is being emptied out of its people and, and why <laughs> there's more Puerto Ricans in the diaspora than there is on the island of Puerto Rico. Um, so that's kind of like those, those are the narratives we're trying to like combat in our documentary. Um, and, uh, you know, that kind of developed in the production, took about almost a year in production of, of this film, um, just navigating through the lives of these three women, um, juxtaposed against all these beautiful like solution-based programs um, all around the island um, and how people are, are, are you know, grassroots organizations, grassroots uh, communities are doing that work to combat it. Um, and yeah, so our, you know, our filmmaking process is really about embedding with the community and making sure that you know, what we're creating um, you know, not only is a, a storytelling piece that has impact, um, but also like helps these grassroots uh, communities and, and organizations as well. Um, so you know, part of our uh, kind of uh, distribution of our film is always about supporting those organizations. So, um, you know, not only do we distribute like our films like through festivals and things like that, but it's really about uh, equipping like these people with these uh, like kind of digital assets and digital storytelling uh, narratives that they could use um, and, and um, in supporting and like highlighting and telling their story. Um, so, you know, the life of our project exists beyond, you know, just, you know, screening it on a screen in front of the audience, but we're really trying to utilize, you know, social media platforms, digital platforms, um, because we really, really think that's where it's gonna really like drive the impact. And we try to like support these action organizations and like utilizing that too. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Do you want to tell us uh, rapidito sobre el what was the challenging part? I mean, you have talked about things that are challenging in your, those are your subjects, pero si quieres hablar un poco de tu proceso y los challenges hay. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the challenging part uh, for our process um, is preparing uh, 
kind of the, the subjects of the film and preparing um, the people in the film around like, you know, what happens once their story is out and, and what kind of, um, you know, not only feedback they're gonna get, but people are gonna wanna support you. So like, are you equipped to receive that support from people and things like that? Um, you know, I think, you know, like it, it, it only serves us as the filmmakers if we could go in, grab our story, and be able to tell that story in a film. Pero I think the work, as especially as a documentary filmmaker, it, you know, really relies beyond that, beyond those spaces, you know, um, and making sure that that once we do tell this story, that impact is getting to these local organizations and and these people. But you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of the times, the people don't have the infrastructure to like accept that support, you know. Um, and, and rightfully so, like they're busy doing the work, you know, <laughs> so they can't, you know, they're not worried about fundraising or they're not worried about impact distribution or things like that, you know, so I think, you know, you know, part of what was like a struggle in the filmmaking process is like making sure people were prepared, like we didn't want to put something out or release anything without them being prepared to like receive um, support and receive what that impact would be, you know, so um, it kind of like coincides with like yeah, we want impact our, on our film, but uh, we want it always, always to like get to the root and get to the um, people on the ground. It's a different kind of color. Would you, we'll talk about that more in the second question, but thank you for, for sharing that because the consideration is also about the other party that it's part of the production. And thank you for, for your work, for your compromiso. And, and for what you're doing and for engaging folks to see media as this, uh, this tool. Thank you so much. Leonardo, what do you have for us? Bueno, eh, la inspiración viene hace 20 años atrás. Eh, conocí este lugar, esta zona, porque queda a más de mil kilómetros del lugar en donde yo vivo. Y justo en esa época me, me llevé mi cámara reflex analógica, hice un, un par de retratos de la gente, y bueno, me encantó cómo, cómo daba, ¿no? A nivel formal, los paisajes, la gente, y siempre supe que iba a volver y iba a hacer una película, o sea, pasa que en el medio pasa la vida, ¿no? En la facultad, estaba en el momento de estudiar la facultad, y cuando volví dije, bueno, a ver, ya tengo el escenario y tengo los protagonistas, ahora hay que ver cuál va a ser la historia. Qué, qué historia es la que a mí me llega, porque se podían contar miles de historias. Y pasó que, me acuerdo que, que viajando en el, en el bus de, de, desde Tafí del Valle hasta Maicha del Valle, empecé a ver como gente se abrazaba muy afectivamente y había como, se notaba que hacía mucho tiempo que no se veían y, y después llegué a este lugar, a Maicha del Valle y hablando con la gente, todos me contaban de esto, ¿no? de que se iban por tres meses a trabajar a un lado y volvían y querían estar con su familia, y que algunos se iban y no volvían más, y que y estaba esa historia y a mí me emocionaba un montón. Y, así que decidí ahí enseguida que iba a ser sobre el desarraigo, y después apareció la vocación en el medio. Eh, justo las personas, los personajes que, que conocí yo, tenían una, un deseo y una, una vocación muy, muy marcado, por lo menos estaban buscando algo, no solo buscar cualquier empleo, sino como algo diferente, y, y bueno, así se dio, digamos, creo que es básicamente es eso. Y después lo más desafiante, todo fue desafiante, y sigue siéndolo, porque <ríe> este proceso de los festivales también lo es, eh, pero sí, en el... En los rodajes tuvimos problemas de que se nos rompían los, los vehículos, de, de todo nos pasó. Pero creo que coincido con este, el, el tema del montaje fue lo más, más complicado, porque eh, es como que tuve que aprender, eh, yo soy montajista también, pero me di cuenta de lo difícil que es eh, editar un largometraje de uno mismo. Eh, justo me agarró la pandemia y estaba solo con eso y este, fue creo que lo más difícil y, y de tener un guión en la cabeza y una idea muy, muy marcada tuve que desarmar todo y empezar a confiar más en, en la forma más en, en el sonido en, en un montón de cuestiones eh, que bueno, 
que, que hicieron a la película que soy y, 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 me, y me ayudaron un montón a crecer, ¿no? Como montajista y como mi punto de vista, mi mirada. Muchísimas gracias por eso. So, el crecimiento, la flexibilidad, staying nimble, staying open, being able to receive, taking into consideration that we're not the only ones that are going through a process, but that there are others and how that process can impact them, right? Not only when you're creating, but also when you put the work out there. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, definitely key consideration. So we're moving right into the collaboration, right? En todos los proyectos de ustedes se habla de colaboración. Alguna intencional, otra que es parte del, del, del journey y otra que es dentro de un proceso de discovery, right? A lo mejor no contábamos con que íbamos a tener un colaborador y a través del proceso conectamos con alguien que terminó siendo clave para el proceso de la filmación y del proyecto. So, Melissa, you want to get us started. The question is, ¿cómo la colaboración impacta su proceso como cineasta y su practice? How has collaboration impacted your filmmaking process and practice? Collaborating for me, I think, with my um, advisor was very much key to me finishing the film. Um, because she pushed me. Sorry if I'm emotional. Um, I cry for anything. <laughs> um, but the film was such, family, Melissa. You can. The film was such a hard process because, um, you know, I've never done anything about myself, my family, and having to narrate it. And so I didn't really have a big like I didn't have like a collaborator like a co-director a co-editor but I had um more like a production um I guess like a production consultant advisor she was my thesis advisor and without her support I don't think I would have done the film you know there were so many moments where I was like writing to her and like I'm gonna stop I don't think I'm ready to continue and and she would just really push me forward so I think her being on this film um, as an advisor, it was key to me finishing. Another collaboration that I thought really impacted, um, and it wasn't a collaboration the whole time, but it was the music and working with the composers. Um, to me, that was like the most fun part. Um, and I think music really impacts your film um, and allows for emotions to come through in such a way. And the two people I worked with, I think, really knew what I was trying to get to, specifically the second person who was um, also a grad student in school with me, and she was studying um, uh, music composition, and she's a composer. And she's amazing. And I think the collaboration with her really pushed the film musically somewhere else. You know, she was able to incorporate the harp and incorporate music that I really wanted in there. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I, I guess for me, the, the, the biggest impact that I had making the film was to realize in this film, it was, you know, it was made with folks from all over the world. So truly an international production. We had uh, Brazilian producers, we had Argentinian uh, sound designer or sound, sound recordist, Brazilian photographer. Um, and, and so um, it was truly like an international collaboration. But apart from that, what was very inspiring to me was realizing in this film specifically, because we spent so much time uh, intimately working in the rainforest in difficult conditions with lots of rain and, you know, eating together, cooking for each other for months. And that we started to feel like the documentary was also affecting reality, like that the film was starting to have a conversation with uh, with. Our, our our lives like we we were changing through through the making of the film we were we were pushed to our edges to our limits and also the the uh our collaborators or our our participants the community that we were working with they were also being changed in the process 
and it, it kind of it was a big realization for me at the time because it was it was my first uh, documentary that you know, we often think of documentaries as documenting reality, but in this case, the documenting the documentary was also creating a reality, that it was kind of a, a conversation. Um, and to the point where, you know, we were, we were interviewing uh, folks who were the elders of this community who were in their 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. And now when we go back, most of them have passed away. And so we were we were actually creating a, a kind of uh, social memory without realizing it, that th this is this became the only kind of record of um, stories about these families and uh, the, the, the Afro indigenous communities that were living in uh, in that part of Brazil. And and so to me, that was that was a kind of big uh, revelation was that what we're doing is, as documentarians is not only telling stories, but we're also um, shaping reality and that this is uh, a, a kind of um, uh, a relationship that we have, you know, that continues. Like even to this day, I'm friends with, I became friends with a lot of my participants. I'm working on another film uh, about one of the participants in my film. Now I'm working on a film just about him. Uh, portrait and huh? and so yeah so I think that's that's it thank you for that en mi caso eh, la, la colaboración sobre todo eh, principalmente fue del equipo los primeros cinco años yo filmé sola y mm -hmm. al quinto año o sea la, a la mitad del proceso eh, trabajando en, en, en otro proyecto con, con una amiga con la montajista eh, me animé a contarle que, que estaba llevando adelante esta película. Era una película que, como, como productora, claro, eh, yo eh, venía llevando adelante otros proyectos y esta era, al ser la película como directora, era como que siempre estaba rezagada y, y que se iba permeando en los tiempos que iban quedando. Y ahí, eh, sobre todo, más allá de, de, de su rol como montajista, como sostén, como amiga, fue el rol también de, de los productores, de mi socia y de, de otro amigo también que se sumó a la producción, de darme valentía para hacer el proyecto y de también darme confianza, porque al ser mi primera película como directora y que también tenía que hacer la cámara y yo tenía muchas inseguridades de, de si, si iba a poder hacerla, en ese sentido fueron eh, fundamental, fundamental, su apoyo fue fundamental. Y también este, al final del proceso eh, se sumó eh, Martín Solá, que es un director argentino, que se sumó, eh, lo conocí en un taller, eh, y también este, ahí se interesó en el proyecto y empezamos a compartir parte de, del proceso, y también me dio como la, la seguridad para, para decirme, ya está la película, terminala, porque, porque es una película y me sentí orgullosa y, y mostrala. Y en ese sentido eh, también fue fundamental porque fue en un momento, al final del proceso, eh, falleció mi abuela. Entonces también eh, se me estaba mezclando todo, todo el tema de que si había perdido a mi abuela y mi abuelo era el protagonista y quería apurarme para terminarla para que él la pudiese ver vivo y poder compartirla con él. Y eso fue posible gracias a, al equipo y a estas alianzas. Así que eso. Gracias por eso. Beautifully, eh, lograda beautifully. Cordero? Yeah, at the, you, know, <clears throat> you know, I think the collaboration, you know, I think as storytellers, we, 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 we can't uh, go into these communities um, with, with the idea of extracting um, what we need from, from the people and from the communities uh, that we work with. And mm -hmm. I think part of that is like establishing this trust with the community um to tell that story but también like you know to know that you know the film has uh you know the film's impact of uh, not only you as a filmmaker but also the communities you're telling stories about um so i think uh the more the community trusts you um it actually like speaks and you can see that in the storytelling right um, your your connection to that community. I think as as diasporicans 
coming back to Puerto Rico and telling a story about the land of like our ancestors um, establishes this very like deep connection for us to tell this story and why we're telling this story um, and to reestablish kind of that connection of the diaspora with um, um, Puerto Ricans living on the island, um, which I think is like, a huge kind of impact point in terms of how the film uh, uh, gets told, right? Um, you know, we were very conscious um, about the language of the film and how we utilize the language of the film, pero también kind of like, um, what are the, why, why climate storytelling is sparse in Puerto Rico um, and the environmental, uh, justice lens on a global scale, you know? Um, and I think because we kind of like went into these communities, um, you know, really as like wanting to help everybody's cause and, and, and we wanted the film to help their cause and what they were doing and build upon what they were doing, uh, mm -hmm. that they really like trusted us to like tell that story. And, you know, it didn't end, you know, it, it didn't end with just creating the film, you know, but that we continue the relationship with these people um, to help them use the film itself as a tool. Um, but not only that, but to help with like any other storytelling projects. Um, and I think that's important, you know, that you leave a community, uh, you know, with more than when you got there, you know. Y que ellos sigan viendo las posibilidades de que esto es un proceso para ellos. Gracias, Leonardo. Bueno, eh, y en mi caso yo le tengo que agradecer a Alejandro Tarraf que hizo la, la cámara y la dirección de fotografía y la verdad que sumó mucho mucho a la, a la película eh, tener a alguien que, 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 bueno, que se dedica a eso eh, y a Noelia Garín que, que ella me, me ayudó durante todo el proceso en el guión y en, eso fue, creo que fueron, fueron de los más importantes pero también a la gente de allá que que también es, es un poco como decía Miki, que se, se, van, se van abriendo a medida que, que va, uno va generando eh, confianza y que te van conociendo y te van formando quizás parte de, de, de la familia y entonces empiezan a, a surgir nuevas cosas y yo creo que eso fue lo más importante. Después sí, obviamente, el proceso de color, el proceso, el proceso de sonido también, en todos los procesos, pero, pero creo que, que bueno, va por ahí. Sí, la colaboración de, de la manera tradicional en términos del montaje de la producción, right, que es clave, ¿no? Y ese entendimiento entre personas en el campo que están, que son parte de este combo, ¿no? Que lleva, que lleva la producción, pero también lo importante que es la colaboración con aquellos que son parte de, de la historia, ¿no? Y de, y de nuestro proceso, tanto a nivel personal como a nivel profesional to carry us and to support us and, and, and support us uh, to think about things that may not be as obvious. So the last question that I have for you, how do you hope that audiences will react to your film? ¿Cómo ustedes, cuál es el deseo de ustedes en términos de la reacción que, que van a ver de audiencias a su, a su proyecto? Y seguimos el mismo orden. Entonces nos vamos con Melissa. Um that they relate to the film, that they can relate to the story, that when they see that story, they think about their families. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be someone that's Puerto Rican, um, specifically Puerto Rican and Ecuadorian, <laughs> but, you know, that they see, you know, that themselves in it and so that's what I really hope that they feel that they can relate to the film that they can you know it inspires them to look into their family history um to maybe preserve some some stories interview your family members interview your elders interview um your tias your abuelas and and everybody um and learn a little bit more about where you come from I can offer that, you know, we presented it in person and I had the honor to be part of that. And somebody walked by me and he said, I just want to see my abuela right now and give her a big abrazo. So oh, thank you, David. I know we're running out of time, so I'll be quick. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So I, I think what I hope the audience uh, experiences in the film is uh, to, to, to kind of experience how stories are actually constructed, like how mythologies are constructed and thinking about not just myth as a kind of general idea, but myth is a personal idea as a person. Like we all have our own personal myths, like, you know, our, our lives in some ways are also stories. And so the stories that our family tells us and the, also the traumas that we inherit from our, from our parents, from our grandparents, you know, I, 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 I hope that the audience kind of reflects on that reflects on um, how these, how all these things are constructed. And that's kind of what uh, the film tries to, to explore. Thank you. Bueno, eh, yo en mi caso espero que, que con ese soplo las, las personas puedan ir más allá del vínculo entre una abuela y una nieta, sino que también puedan pensar, pensarse en la vejez y pensar también en, en la vejez de, de los otros que nos acompañan, ya sean nuestros abuelos o nuestros padres. Y en ese sentido también en, en el intercambio entre estas generaciones y de que para poder... Eh, mantener un vínculo, hay que compartir algo, y en ese sentido eh, la empatía es fundamental de ambos lados, de, de, de buscar qué compartir con, con, nuestros, con nuestros vínculos. Y sobre todo <coughs> deseo que, que las personas puedan sentir que, que la vida vale la pena ser vivida, y que están las pequeñas cosas de... de de lo que nos rodea y que vale la pena estar acompañado, que todos queremos estar acompañados. Y creo que, que es algo que, que invita a la película y que deseo de corazón que, que la gente pueda sentir eso. Muchísimas gracias. Um, I think, you know, for us at the, you know, we have the, the micro projects featured in the film all have ways for um, people to support them. And we definitely are like highlighting those those projects. But también, I think another you know the, the other theme of the film is that you know Puerto Rico, the Caribbean island nations, they contribute the least to climate change, but at our, they were at the forefront of its impact. You yes. know, um, so that's about what everybody else around the world is doing. You know, and how it affects us um, as island nations, right? At, uh, so I think it's a call to action just around that globally uh, mm -hmm. and, and looking at how you contribute to that. Um, pero también like, uh, you know, when, when going to Puerto Rico, how, how also are you contributing to that? You know, are you buying locally grown, locally sourced um, food and things like that? Um, you know, where are you supporting and things like that? So, you know, our film, you know, not only like provides a bridge for, for those local micro projects happening and then like spotlights them, um, mm -hmm. but it also calls for people to question their actions and questions how they move in the world um, as it pertains to like the environmental impact that you're leaving um, in everything that you do, you know, and think about that. Thank you so very much. Thank you so, so very much for that. And it is true, Puerto Rico is slated to be, it's like the biggest countries, Puerto Rico, Myanmar, and then Haiti. Don't ask me why, but I did a session with New York film, women in film and television around that, uh, heavy. Uh, Leonardo, close us out. Bueno, Talk. yo creo que, ¿cómo? Sí, yo creo que la película, eh, tiene mucho de, la, de, de cómo funcionan las relaciones humanas, y, y plantea una pregunta que, que es, como, es esto de, de bueno, ¿qué decidís? No? O sea, eh, seguir tu vocación y alejarte de tus seres queridos, eh, o quedarte con ellos. Esa es una pregunta que, que, que bueno, que creo que se va a percibir y creo que es lo que plantea. Y por otro lado también la contemplación en cuanto, en cuanto a la imagen y el sonido que está muy tratado desde ese lado de la película, eh, no es una película que, en la que hablan todo el tiempo, sino que vale la pena, inclusive, sí, como sentir que uno está en ese lugar, esa fue la búsqueda, eh, entonces me gustaría que, que, que si se perciba eso, y que, que idealmente puedan escucharla con un buen sistema de sonido, y una buena, pero porque después se pierde, sino, ¿no? Bueno, no tiene música la película, así que es importante poder con los percibir los ambientes y todo eso.
Muchísimas gracias, muchísimas gracias por todo lo que han compartido. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you for your patience with this technically challenged or technologically challenged moderator and facilitator. It is great at a more personal and selfish level. I will say gracias porque escucharlos ustedes es como decimos en la Isla del Encanto, la suquita para el café. It makes us realize that this is the work that we want to keep on doing and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts.